Parliament has now risen for its winter break after a week of claims and counterclaims about fake emails and alleged favours for Labor mates. Joining me in the studio to discuss all that and other issues is Senator Helen Coonan, Shadow Minister for Finance. Welcome, Senator, and thanks for Hi joining there. us. Thank you, Helen. I'm sure you'd like better weeks than last week. Well, I think it was a difficult week for both sides of politics and at the end of it, uh, what we have, of course, is uh, unanswered questions from the Labor Party and uh, the government as to just precisely what the relationship was between the Brisbane car dealer Mr Grant and Mr Swan. Uh, he appeared to have extraordinary access to the highest ranks of the Labor Party and that uh, is uncontested and still not answered. All right, well this going on the front foot is, is very admirable but nonetheless the public would be left with the impression that your leader called on the Prime Minister to resign on the basis essentially of a fake email that he had only viewed with his eyes, he hadn't checked it out properly and yet he went very big with it. Doesn't that seriously question his political judgment? Well, I think what you have to understand about this is that this uh, particular action was taken based on sworn testimony on what was actually given in evidence at a Senate equivocal. committee. Uh, well, it was given uh, as sworn evidence and it was something that on the face of it was credible. And uh, but it's no I think, longer credible, is it? Well, it isn't credible anymore and uh, to Mr Turnbull's credit, he immediately recognised the fact once it was established that it wasn't credible but and he didn't pursue in, that. Does it call into question his political judgment that he went so heavily on that, he himself perhaps even rather than a foot soldier? Well look I think what we have to understand here is that it was actually sworn testimony, it was credible and I think out there in you know the, the sort of broader public, people do give opposition leaders credit for having a go. Uh, we're not there to uh, to be the government, we're there as the opposition, we have to keep the government to account. And if you actually receive what on the face of it looks like credible evidence, uh, you wouldn't get uh, many votes I don't think if you don't have a go. This morning on television, Mr Turnbull, and you've just uh, reiterated it, he admitted it had been a very tough week for your party. Isn't he to blame for all that? Hasn't he brought this on all of you? Well, look, I think the circumstances were very fluid. Uh, what you have to understand is if you do get uh, evidence or you get tip-offs or you get information that uh, should be pursued, the public expect that of the opposition. They don't expect the opposition to always be on the back foot. Uh, it's important that the opposition takes the fight up to the government and that we do not resile from keeping the government, holding the government to account. Did Mr Turnbull mishandle the whole affair? Well, look, I think it's very... D in, in hindsight, uh, what you actually see here is a set of circumstances that Mr Turnbull admitted didn't establish his case against Mr Rudd, but it so certainly... So did he mishandle it? No, because, in fact, what he did have was unchallenged <coughs> emails against uh, Mr Swan, and that well and truly established that uh, a particular person, one out of 240, got very special treatment in looking at support from a government fund and the general public I think are very concerned about integrity in government processes. There's money washing around Canberra, billions of dollars and it is terribly important that there is some rigour in how those funds are administered. Do you think Mr Turnbull's leadership authority has been diminished this week? No, I think uh, he's come out of it a bit stronger than he really went into it. Uh, he was building very well with the story of debt and deficit, which is of great concern to Australians. There was credible evidence about uh, some mishandling of a government fund, and uh, that was important that it actually be pursued and that it be teased out. Now, one part of it didn't work, the other part of it is a well and is a live issue and hasn't been dealt with by the Labor Party. There are no answers from the government as to why one out of 240 car dealers got such special treatment, Helen. All right, well, on, a, on another issue, but sort of uh, still the same area, there were also questions not only about his political judgment, about, but about the splits and some uh, on policy in particular. And for example, one area, four coalition MPs were at least supporting the government on abolishing immigration detention debts. Now, voters at least would be left with the impression that he does doesn't have a handle on policy unity and on being able to keep the party together. Well, let me just say about that that uh, the opposition to some of those issues
issues to do with migration have been very long standing. The particular members of our party who uh, have opposed both the former governments, the Howard government's approach to many of these issues and have continued to oppose it now that we're in opposition uh, are views that are genuinely held and uh, that was well known. I don't think that that in any way indicates that Mr Turnbull has any less of a grasp on policy in those areas. Right, so I don't, don't been accept that. A carbon trading, but I do want to turn on to the economy. Both the OECD and the IMF essentially gave a big tick to the government's handling of the global financial crisis and the ensuing downturn. Doesn't that undermine the coalition's position on that score? Well, I think if you have a really good look at, at both of those reports, they actually uh, forecast growth uh, as weaker in the medium term. And uh, in fact, whilst they did agree that uh, some of the stimulus payments were useful to put a floor under the economy. What we really have to look at in the medium term is where all that is going. Now, even the Reserve Bank Governor has said that whilst the forecasts, Treasury's forecasts, may not be crazily optimistic uh, to be suggesting that there'll be above trend growth for six years, that's a very big assumption. And we've now got a debt that last week, Helen, tipped over the $100 billion mark. We're already guaranteeing state and utility debts of another $230 billion. And we've still got a whole lot of issues that aren't yet funded. For example, there appears to be about a $60 billion black hole in the government's infrastructure program that's not funded. The broadband program, another $43 billion, is not funded. And we know that we're already trending towards $315 billion debt. So I think we have to take this bit by bit, and we've always been critical that the stimulus funding hasn't been, hasn't done enough for productivity. In other words, not much value for money, and that's really where it's going to, I think, be tested in the longer term. But nonetheless, these two bodies are saying that Australia, it was milder than in other um, advanced mm. nations, and that they're essentially saying we will come out of this sooner. Well, so it should be. I mean, we started with a surplus. Now, we started in a much better position than any other, pretty much any other comparable country. Who was that due to? Of course, it was due to the very tough decisions taken by the previous government. So, you know, you dealt a good hand of economic cards. You don't want to be brought back to the field by mismanagement of the current government. Now, I think we'll see as we go forward just how effective this is and whether people will see in the end that they will have got value for money with enormous debt to pay off. All right, well, I want to just ask you about the government's scrapping of Grocery Choice website, which was an election promise. It was done on the Friday afternoon that Michael Jackson died. Surprise, surprise. But are you critical of the government for essentially breaking an, ele an election promise, but also seeming to cave to pressure from the big retailers? Well, look, uh, I mean, there's obviously a story to be told as to why they caved into pressure, but I think what it really shows is that this is a government that made some election promises that they really didn't have much hope of actually implementing in a way that would be of any benefit to consumers. So they talked and talked and talked about bringing down the pressure on consumers for both uh, petrol and groceries. They haven't been able to deliver. So you think it wasn't thought through in the first place no, during not the at election all. campaign? not at all. I mean, these are reckless... They were reckless and undeliverable election promises and now the government is paying the price of the fact that you need to think through carefully, you need to understand how all this will work before you make promises and before you're misleading people. All right, well, if there is a parliamentary inquiry, which some are calling for, into both the timing and the influence that was brought to bear uh, about this decision, would you support Bob Brown's call to have the senior executives of Coles and Woolworths compelled to give evidence? Well, look, I think we've got a long way to go before you'd get to uh, requiring people to give evidence. Let's uh, just understand what in fact has happened first, rather than it just simply being an allegation. But the, the bottom line here is that this is a broken promise. The Labor Party and the government have got a case to answer for making reckless promises uh, to get themselves elected and then being able to do nothing to bring down the pressure of both petrol prices and groceries for consumers. Helen Coonan, we thank you for joining us. Have thanks. a good winter break. Oh, thanks, Helen. <laughs> You'll Cheers. need it. <laughs> Cheers very much, sir.